Hi, my name is Hitesh and you are watching SQL Injection Master Course. And don't forget to visit my homepage and this is really a mandatory line for me for every start of video. So uh, please bear us with me, uh, bear with me in this video too and upcoming videos too. You are always going to find this line that don't forget to visit me, visit my homepage and leave a feedback to me. Now I hope you can understand how much valuable your feedback is to me and it has really impressively engaged my quality in a much higher state than uh, the previous videos and your feedbacks really make that happen. So let us proceed on uh, this video. In this video we are going to focus on what we have learned in the previous video. In previous video we have learned how we can actually ask the database uh, in the true and false, form false format. In the previous videos we were what we were doing is very simple. We were trying to ask database something that hey give me uh, the item of the database name. So database was eventually giving us all the values that hey Hitesh this is the name of the database. But in this case we have got some different scenario and let us try to find out what we have. Uh, if we move on to our virtual machine. Let me first close this from the last video. Let me just hit a control C. And first of all I would like to move up in the slash root slash desktop and I will find that lesson7.zip file is there. Also don't forget to check the supporting materials in this video uh, so that you can find out the lesson7.zip file. I have to move this lesson7.zip to slash war slash www slash master and I also need to travel to the same directory. Let me bit uh, let me a bit you can say lazy. I can copy this and I can paste it here. So if I do a quick ls the lesson zip file is here. So unzip the lesson 7.zip okay so it has unzipped all the contents and let me launch the Firefox of course in the background mode so that my terminals doesn't get busy up and I can do a lots of work on it okay please restore okay so things are getting from the lesson number six but we are not interested in lesson number six in this case we are interested in lesson number seven so here it says a very simple thing that is there is also a small animation for you so that you can also enjoy while doing all the things. It's really a nice one uh, related to some bugs which are out there. Uh, not that bug actually. So uh, what we can do out here is very simple. Uh, hope this is visible and if I do a question mark id equals to 1 it gives you are in. So this you are in is actually the thing which might create our interest. If I hit a single quote here I found that vala value is not being out there. Okay so we didn't get any error like you have an SQL syntax error or any other like that. So does that mean the application is not vulnerable to SQL? The chances are it might be vulnerable. So let's try to break the query by double quotes. Okay, it doesn't break it. Let me do a single quote and a bracket. It doesn't make it. Let me do a double quotes and the bracket. Okay, the things have fixed being fixed up. Let me remove this and put a single quote. Okay, nothing happens. Uh, so let me put a one and put all of that. Perhaps any of that might break eventually and put some other things like uh, this please at least one of them break it. It doesn't break anything like that. So what the conclusion might be for a new pen test is that hey the application is not vulnerable and you can proceed. I would put a backslash and it gives nothing so that means application is perfectly fine. But chances are high that it might be vulnerable. So let us assume that if I hit a single quote the output is not there but if I do it like this the output is out here. So let us just assume that single quote and a hyphen hyphen plus it fix the query and that means I can put some things around like let me put a and one it gives me an output let me put a and zero that means the output is not there so again there is error that means yes there is not an error that means no 
So by this also I can ask some question to the database. Yes, of course, the same way by which I have learned in the previous example. So let me just copy this. And yes, of course, you are guessing right. The, X, the command list file is out there. This time it's the name command 2.txt. And all the commands are here. Here it is, quite visible. So what I need to do, I need to select the last command. I hope I have discussed it quite in the detail in the previous video. I'll copy this and I will just paste it here in place of zero. But since it's an end, I have to unwrap, encapsulate all these things. And of course, to remove the single, these column and end the bracket. So let me zoom out a bit. Okay, so I'm just trying to ask some question for it. Let's say the question is, is equals to, uh, let's say 110. So it gives out nothing in this case. So let me again go back here. So it's giving select ask I and here we have got the bracket and everything. So let me just ask this. It's not giving me anything out there. Let me check out what is actually the problem. Select ask I, substring, select database. And there is one, one, and I think absolutely perfectly fine is there. It's not prompting out anything for me. Sometimes these things happen and I really, really get worried about these things. So let us try something else. Let us just try this one so that we can find out if I had make any typo and my eyes are actually not able to catch that up at this phase. Sometimes these things really happen. So what I have to do, I have to encapsulate everything into the bracket. Okay, so this is working. Perhaps something is out there which my eyes are not getting, catching up right now. But what my goal is here, that I just really want to make sure that the answer is yes or no. So if I make it 102, it is false. That means the, the number is, uh, you are in is not prompting up. If I do 104, it's not prompting up. Okay, so my eyes caught up this. This too was actually making some problems. So I hope you got the scenario how we can proceed in this case. But also I would like to mention one more thing that is you can also visit this easycalculation.com slash ask us slash to speed up the things. Of course, we have to iterate 26 times uh, to find out the database name if the database name is totally with the alphabets. So let's say S, S value is 115. So let me ask the database if the first character is 115 so let me just ask it 115 so it says yes Satesh. the first character is 115 let me uh, move back to the second character and the second character was security so e so 101 so let's go back again so it's 101 oops error i forgot to replace two here so it says yes, the second character is two. And let me go to the third character. This time C, it is 99. So let me go to the third character. And it's 99. So all the true, that means you have to do in like that way. And don't make some mistakes like me. I really, really appreciate if you don't do that. But really mistakes teaches you a lot. And don't forget and don't hesitate that you have done mistake. It's really common. We are human beings. We are made to make mistakes. So make them and learn a lot from them. Also in place of database, now what you can do, you can simply ask the version also. And there would be some problem to find out the versions as well. So if I do a version, and since the version is, let's say if I place a six here, so it gives me a false. But if I do a five here, that also gives me a false. And since it's a Ubuntu based, I know that what is my actually my version. And if I do, if the version is uh, less than, let's say six, it gives me nothing again. If I do a seven here, 
it gives me nothing again but of course if I do a, a 3 here it again gives me an error so that means the version is not even close you are guessing so it's yes of course it's 5.1 Ubuntu version but I leave this for you as a simple exercise to find out what might be the reason and how we can get and guess the database of course I'm going to talk about a lot of these things in the upcoming videos but a small exercise for you as well and don't forget to practice along with me and visit my website so that's all for this video and thank you so much for watching and keep enjoying the security stuff.